Good afternoon to everyone and, and um, I appreciate the, the opportunity that the Irish National Flood Forum have, has given our community group to present here today. I suppose if I start on the image there, um, that's our town logo in uh, Banlaslo. And our, back in 2009, when uh, we were the largest urban area affected in the whole country, I hear um, different uh, statistics out here today, but we have, in Banaslo, there was over 140 premises flooded back in 2009. And at an early stage in um, 2009, in the Jan or January 2010, we realised that we had to form a committee because there was a vacuum there of um, questions. There was a vacuum of who do you talk to, who do you go to. Your initial thing is you go to your politician or you go to your local authority. And flooding, to the extent uh, that happened in Banaslo, it was, you know, we had flooding in our locality in 95 and 2005. But to the extent of what had happened in Banaslo and nationally, it was a, an eye-opener. Um, after meeting the local authority, uh, we, have I we had issues with the East Bridge in Banaslo. We realised at an early stage a hydrological study had to be done in the River Suck. Um, if people remember back, there was a, a, a big meeting in the Shearwater Hotel in Banaslo in 2010, and the then Minister Martin Mansour was there, and everyone had their ideas and who was responsible and the whole lot. So with Frank and John and our committee, we realised that we had to get on the ground and, 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 and start doing a hydrological study of our area. So we contacted um, Professor Con Canan in the hydrological department. One of the members on our committee is Brian Keneally, and he was an engineering graduate from NUIG. And we went in and we met uh, uh, Con Canan, an eminent uh, hydrologist, and he convinced, we convinced him to get on board and we got six to eight students and we funded. And along with um, Tony Cawley of Bronra Surveyors and, um, and Hydro Environmental, we uh, examined the unprecedented flooding in Banlaslo. Um, we wanted probably solutions. We weren't into the blame game of who caused whatever. We wanted solutions moving forward. And I suppose one of the big things here in, in, in our flood study that it came up with nine different recommendations. It had a favourable cost-benefit analysis of 1 is to 1.72. We were talking about that earlier on. And our, our, you can see a little picture of our, our, our CD there. Uh, it's all contained in, in, in this little booklet. Now, you might say, who pays for this? The cost of our study back in 2010 was over 65,000 euro. You might say, how did a local little committee of about six or seven people fund that? We did golf classics. We did uh, a lot of fundraising and issues. But the fact that we're a community group, um, we were very fortunate to get uh, a grant from the Community Foundation of Ireland of over 20,000, which was a huge help to us. Um, the cost of the flooding in Banlaslo, and you can see it quite here, it was over 8 million. That's 140 plus premises flooded, plus all the premises that are flood risk. So look at it. I was in 2009, I had two small kids and I drove home on, on Christmas morning and I passed by our train station and to our local area and there wasn't a light or anything that Christmas in 2009. And it hit home to me that Christmas day. I said, I'm going to be here hopefully health wise for the next 40 years. Is this an area that I want to let slip? Is this an area that I want to uh, die a debt? Because uh, the mood on the ground was, I'm not going to reinstate my house. Why should I? It flooded twice before. Uh, there's, there's an estate there called Ashfield Drive. It was the third time it got flooded. And yet, there was no scheme. There was no, you know, there was no hope for them. So that's really what we started in. It came up with... Uh, nine recommendations. Thankfully, back in um, 2011, the OPW and the local authority and ourselves, we came together with our local politicians and decided to build a, a, a Derry Mullen flood wall. Um, this came on public information meet, uh, leaflets. It came through the media. Um, I'd have to say our engagement with the local authority, the Galway County Council, we had a ban of slow town council, then it, it since it was um, brought in under the umbrella of Galway County Council, and our local representatives have been very, very helpful, along with the INFF, because I suppose uh, 
when initially Michael and 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 Jer and and the lads contacted us in Banlaslow, we didn't know where we were going initially, and they thought we were ahead of them, and we thought they were ahead of us. But between bo- both of us uh, and having a flow of information, and I suppose if you want to highlight people that gave us in the right direction, we seen that there was going to be catchment f- um, uh, sea frams being done in 2015. We're back in 2010. And we met Gavin Poole up in uh, Trim in the OPW offices, and he showed us the direction that the eastern side of the country was going. And we just tried to mirror that here in, in, in Banlaslow. Um, the big thing in our group, I suppose, outside of doing the hydrological study, we found that the settlement that uh, people had to agree with, or the reinstatement, the insurance companies like to call, with house owners that we had to go in and actually deal with a lot of cases ourselves where you know it's a private issue people don't want to tell you well how much they got in their reinstatement but a lot of people and particularly i would say elderly people didn't get the level of reinstatement that other people that in the same neighborhood were and in fairness to our lo- local uh, solicitors, they, they, we brought people in, and Frank and John were, were very great at this, that we brought people in to no- and used solicitors to negotiate because they didn't have the same backup. Um, I suppose it lifted spirits in our community. We have a flood wall. We've a bit done. There's a lot more to do. Um, we met Minister Moore, and he's very proactive, and Minister, Minister Canny, or the former Minister, Minister Canny, earlier on this morning. We have a lot more to do in Banlaslow, but uh, what we have done, we have done well, and I'd like to praise the OPW and the local authority and what's done. Um, the other thing, this is just a little brief description of, of the little flood wall there, in, in the red line is where it's protected. Um, the 66 houses were flooded there in 2009. Uh, The flood wall was built in 2011. It's a mixture of sheet piling and concrete uh, um, walls and also clay buns. Um, It's very similar to what's starting here in Athlone, I think, at the moment. And, you know, it's absolutely, it's a heartbeat for the people there. People are doing up their houses. People are extending their houses in the state. That would not have happened without this flood wall, you know. And that's what... You know, people talk about hard engineering and soft engineering. Unfortunately, in, 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 in Banlaslow, because of our topography, we're very low line as the suck comes from Castle Ree. So we've no other option but really ha- a lot of the hard engineering solutions. Now, inside a flood wall is great. But next thing, we got, I can't get flood cover. I can't uh, go for a remortgage. A child going to college, I can't go for fund. I can't get release funds. I can't sell it. No one can buy it. So in 2011, the the memorandum of understanding was done, and we kind of thought that was great. But you'd ring your insurance. I got flood cover on my own property at an extreme high price of a thousand euro, but other people weren't. Other people didn't have the same knowledge. And I suppose uh, we, uh, on January 2016, we hopped in the doors. I remember there was a, a hard, uh, cold weather at that time. And Frank and John and, and, and our, our committee, we, we knocked on doors. And in our um, survey, 60% of the people inside the flood wall, not outside it, inside it, did not have flood cover. It's a personal thing. Some people didn't want to tell us. Uh, there was people that I, you know, closed the door. I don't, that's personal to me, because it is. And when you have uh, no flood cover, you don't want to be, you know, announced out either. And it, it's important to realise um, it's a very personal thing to people, and it's also something, you know, that we thought weren't as high, because we hear this 98% have flood cover, which you know I I I can't understand where the, the, the these um, statistics are coming from. I suppose one has to conclude that the insurers are not really considering where the state has invested money. And the state has done its bit in Derry Mullen. Go back to the flood wall. The state can't do any more for Derry Mullen. It's fabulous. It's a credit to the OPW. It's a credit to local authority. But who, who's failing us is the insurance. Until we wake up in this country and realise how such a social injustice we have here, Jerry's hi- highlighted it. Um,
Jared's highlighted it. The lads were very good at the, at, the, at the Doyle Committee during the week. But it's a huge issue. And I suppose the flood insurance bill, if we want to look ahead in the next two, three years, wherever this flood insurance bill is going, what's the marketable rate for your property? Is there a ceiling on the price? Who polices? I think that might be spelt wrong, Frank. But uh, who polices? Who regulates it? And I just finally like to leave you, and I praise everyone here with their contributions today, is here is a little um, renewal from that company for a three-bedroom bungalow inside the flood wall who is in the tax bracket or the property tax bracket between 100 to 150, is it, I think? It's, it's, it's in that middle bracket there. And you can see the cost is 1698 right? Now, that's what a renewal is. That premises got flooded. That premises got uh, a settlement. That premises reinstated. It's it's three bedroom bungalow. Uh, it's inside the flood wall, and this is what that company there expects as a reasonable renewal. Thanks very much.